So uh, we have stopped here in our last lecture uh, in acquired or adaptive immunity, which is a specific uh, type of immunity. This particular immunity is of two types. One is the serum based, which is the humoral immunity. One is the cell mediated. So humoral immunity is a B cell specific immunity. There are two types of B cells. One is the memory B cell and the plasma cells. And the plasma cells will uh, develop the immunoglobulins that are known as the antibody. So there are five different types of immunoglobulin, IgM, IgA, IgG, IgD, and IgE. This IG stands for immunoglobulin. In case of cell mediated immunity, T cells are actually responsible here, this time, this type of immunity. So there are four different types of T cells, T helper cells, suppressors, T failure, and T memory cells. So from this we can uh, we can we can understand that innate immunity uh, that is uh, that, that occurs immediately after any kind of infection. This is the first line of defense, this is a non-specific one. And the acquired immunity, this is there is a delayed response, a delayed onset, but it is a very specific type of immunity. And this specific type of immunity, the acquired immunity and the innate immunity, they have two different type of uh, function. But the acquired immunity uh, is responsible for the production of antibody, for activation of T cells. And both the type of immunity have two different mechanisms. As I said, innet has a first line of defense. This is non-specific, and the adaptive is the second line of defense, and it's specific. So both correlate with each other, and they are actually doing proper function and resisting our body, helping our body, or protecting our body for different kind of infections. So this particular immunity depends uh, on different uh, parameters. The first one is the species immunity. So species uh, immunity denotes a total or relative resistance to a pathogen shown uh, by all members of a particular species. Uh, so for example, the chickens are resistant to bacillus anthracis causative agent of anthrax. Rats, rats are, uh, are, are resistant to colinacterium diphtheria, causative agent of diphtheria. But humans are susceptible to both, although humans are higher in those. But what is the exact reason behind it? It's still not clear. Next one is a racial one, or race immunity. So it denotes a difference in susceptibility or resistance uh, to particular infection among different races within the same species. For example, races with sickle cell anemia prevents uh, in Mediterranean coast uh, are, are immune to uh, infection caused by malaria parasite uh, Plasmodium falciparum. So this is uh, only because of the genetic abnormality of the RBCs, the exocytes. And this results in sickle cell erythrocytes that prevents uh, the parasitism of Plasmodium falciparum. Similarly, individuals with a hereditary deficiency of glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase is the enzyme are also less susceptible to infection of plasmodium falciparum. Individual immunity will develop via vaccination or immunization to certain or particular type of diseases. Now, what are the factors that are actually responsible for innate immunity? So, placenta is a factor that is actually preventing infection, but Still, we can uh, get uh, some examples that infection with toxoplasmosis, infection with rubella, uh, infection with uh, cytomegalovirus and herpes virus, still having, uh, still there, although there are. Uh, 
and also uh, can produce congenital malformation. Next one is the hematopoiesis. So hematopoiesis is a cellular turnover of hematopoietic system and is supported uh, by a small population of cells. These are termed as hematopoietic stem cells. So stem cells are uh, capable of self renewal and differentiation into individual lymphomyeloid lineages. So available evidence uh, indicates that uh, the decision of, of, of a particular stem cell to self renew or to differentiate and the decision of a, a multipotential progenitor uh, to select a lineage pathway during differentiation. In, in, in contrast, uh, proliferative kinetics of the progenitors, uh, namely survival and the expansion of progenitors, appears to be controlled by a number of interacting cytokines. So different cytokines are taking part here. Whereas proliferation and uh, maturation of uh, committed progenitors uh, are controlled by late acting factors such as erythropoietin, uh, macrophage, colony stimulating factor, uh, granulocyte, colony stimulating factor, interleukin 5 progenitors at earlier stage of development uh, are, are controlled by a group of several overlapping uh, cytokines like interleukin 3. Uh, and interleukin 4 to regulate proliferation of multi-potential progenitors uh, only after they are triggered to exit from the common system. The triggering of, uh, of, of, of cycling uh, of uh, dormant primitive progenitors and uh, proliferation of uh, uh, lymphohemopoietic uh, primitive progenitors uh, mostly appear to require interactions of early acting cytokines like uh, interleukin-6, granulocyte, colony stimulating factors, uh, interleukin-11, 12, uh, and uh, leukemia uh, inhibitory factor. Next one is uh, cell lineage. So the cell lineage uh, of an organism is a pattern of cell divisions during its uh, development. Uh, these are uh, described by, 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 by following divisions in uh, living individuals or by uh, marking cells and examining their progeny. Some organisms or precursor, uh, precursor cells um, display invariant patterns of cell division in, uh, in, which, in which specification of cell uh, fates uh, is, is correlated with cell division pattern. In other organisms, uh, lineage patterns are uh, variable and not correlated with uh, cell fate. So invariant cell lineages uh, reflect both cell autonomous mechanisms of uh, fate determination and highly reproducible cell cell interactions. And uh, uh, in, in, in genetic uh, analysis of cell lineage has focused on systems where cell lineage and cell fates are correlated, such as uh, a particular type of uh, cases like C. elegans or the nervous systems of Drosophila. Maturation uh, affecting cell lineage in this uh, animal have been uh, informative in uh, understanding both the mechanisms of uh, cell fate specification and also the control and also the control um, control of, of, of cell proliferation. The history there is a history. So cell lineage studies began with uh, with with white man description of various patterns uh, in, uh, in which Brow in uh, 1870s and continued with description of lineages in many invertebrate animals, including nematodes, sea urchin, and uh, uh, acid, uh, acidians. 
uh, it was found that uh, that in some animal groups, such as the nematodes and ascidians, the pattern of cell divisions uh, was uh, almost identical from individual to individual. Such uh, invariant uh, cell lineages allowed uh, the reconstruction of uh, extensive lineage trees. In other animals, such as uh, leeches and insects, uh, stereotype patterns of cell divisions uh, were seen in, in, in the progeny of uh, particular precursor cells because, uh, the, because of the uh, correlation between uh, cell lineage and cell fate in such invariant lineages. Uh, and it was it was assumed that uh, cell pets are, uh, are determined by factors uh, segregating uh, within the uh, dividing cells. Uh, the, the, the mode of development was cons uh, constructed, uh, con sorry, constructed and trusted uh, with 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 the uh, inter intermediate cleavages uh, observed in other animals, in which cell lineages are variable and cell pets are determined by a sales interaction with its, 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 its environment. However, as discussed below, uh, that uh, invariant uh, cell lineages uh, do not uh, uh, necessarily mean that cell pets are uh, determined by, you know, by, by the cell lineage pattern. So there are different types of cell lineage pattern to be followed, like uh, direct observation, like clonal analysis, but we are not going into detail uh, here. So next one is the uh, organs of immune system. So the immune system consists of many parts uh, uh, that work together to defend the body uh, against invaders. The primary parts of the immune system include the bone marrow, the thymus, uh, the bone marrow is uh, extremely important to the immune system because all the body's black cells, including uh, T and uh, B lymphocytes, originate uh, from bone marrow. T lymphocytes remain in the marrow to mature, uh, while T lymphocytes travel to the thymus. And the thymus is a, a bilobed gland. In a gland. Here you can see, uh, in this picture, here you can see. So this is your bone marrow to uh, bone marrow. Here you can see this is the bone marrow to the to the thymus here. So they are going to the thymus. It's a bilobed gland located uh, above the heart, and behind the sternum and between the lungs. The thymus is uh, only active to uh, to Pivati. Then uh, it uh, slowly shrinks and uh, is replaced by fat and connective tissue. So this thymus is uh, responsible for producing the hormone thymosin, uh, which in, in turn aids in the, uh, in the production of T cell. Uh, the thymus, uh, the T cell multiply, uh, multiply at where the different uh, antigen receptors and differentiate into uh, helper T cells, then uh, cytotoxic T cells uh, here you can see. So, Helper T cells, cytotoxic T cells, various proteins like CD4, CD8 are expressed in the T cell surface. Uh, the, the thymus will have uh, produced all the T cells an individual uh, need to um, meet by, by puberty. After the T and uh, B type of lymphocytes are mature in the thymus uh, and bone, uh, bone marrow, uh, and they then travel to the lymph nodes and and spleen here again you can see the lymph node and and, and 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 spleen here so in both the cases here the lymph node and the spleen they will travel here so uh, that they remain until uh, the immune system is activated the lymph nodes uh, are located throughout the body the spleen is located at the upper left area of the abdomen uh, behind the stomach uh, behind the stomach uh, and under the diaphragm. Uh, the main function of the spleen is to filter the blood. Healthy blood uh, cells easily pass through the spleen. However, damaged red blood cells are broken down by macrophages uh, uh, in, in, in the spleen. The spleen serves as a, as a storage unit uh, for platelets and white blood cells. And the spleen aids uh, the immune system by 
identifying uh, microorganisms that may cause infection. In addition to the lymph node and, and spleen, uh, the secondary lymphoid organs are also there. These are the primary lymphoid organs, bone marrow, thymus, uh, spleens, etc. Uh, thymus uh, at, the, at the primary lymphoid organ. The secondary lymphoid organ, like spleen and lymph nodes, the secondary lymphoid organs are, uh, are mucosal associated lymphoid tissues that are called mults and, uh, and, and gut associated lymphoid tissues that are called gults. Uh, so plays a vital role in the immune response or immune system, uh, although they are considered to be part of uh, the lymphatic system, the secondary lymphoid organs. So mild uh, lymphoid tissue found in part of the body where mucosa is present, such as uh, intestines, eyes, nose, skin, mouth. They uh, contain lymphocytes and macrophages that defend against uh, um, pathogen again attempting to enter uh, from outside the body. Whereas GERLTs are uh, lymphoid tissues found in, uh, in, in, the, in the mucus and submucus of the gastrointestinal tract, tonsils, appendix, and pear patches uh, in, the, in the small intestine. So next one is the cells of immune system. So many cells work together uh, as a part of uh, non-specific uh, as well as adaptive immune system, a specific immune system. Uh, so the immune cells are sometimes called white blood cells or leukocytes, and they also originate from bone marrow, uh, from a, uh, bone marrow from a common precursor, the pluripotent uh, stem cell. So granulocytes are type one, a type of a particular type of uh, nucleocytes. So here you can see uh, large uh, stem cells are, are, are coming. So these are hematopoietic stem cells, as I said here. Here you can clearly put in stem cells are hematopoietic stem cells. So they are getting here this lymphoid lineage. So we have already discussed about the lineages. So two type of lineages are there. One is the lymphoid lineage and the myeloid lineage. So lymphoid progenitor and the myeloid progenitors are there. And from the lymphoid progenitors, we are getting B cell progenitor, the natural killer cell and T cell progenitor. For myeloid progenitors, we are getting neutrophil, eosinophil and monocytes. And then we are getting mast cell, vasophils, dendritic cells and macrophages. And uh, from the lymphoid progenitor, we are also getting from the T cell progenitor as memory T cell, cytotoxic T cell and effort T cell. From B cell progenitor, we are getting memory T cell and the plasma that we have already discussed. So uh, here you can see you can, uh, can see that the granulocytes are a type of leukocyte. And, uh, and, and uh, that contains uh, granules in their uh, cytoplasm containing enzymes. Neutrophil, neutrophils, vesophil, eosinophil are type of granulocytes. Neutrophils are considered the first responder of the innate uh, immune system. Neutrophils along with macrophages circulate through the blood and uh, reside in tissue watching for potential problems. Both cells can eat bacteria as well as uh, communicate with other immune cells if an issue, uh, issue, issue arises there. So cells of the adaptive immune system also called you know, the immune effector cells carry out the immune function, the effector cells actually carry out the function uh, in, in response to stimulus. So natural killer uh, T lymphocytes and B lymphocytes are example of, uh, of, of, of effector cells. So for example, activated T lymphocytes uh, destroy pathogen by a cell mediated response. Uh, activated B cells secret antibodies that uh, aid in mounting an immune uh, response. So effector cells are involved uh, for the destruction of cancer cell mostly. Uh, non effector cells are antigen presenting cells, APCs, such as uh, dendritic cells. Here you can see this, these are the non effector cells. So these are the dendritic cells, antigen presenting cells, such as dendritic cells, and then regulatory T cells. Uh, regulatory uh, T cells, tumor associated macrophages, and myeloid uh, derived uh, suppressor cells and also myeloid-derived uh, suppressor cells. Uh, 
non-effector cells cannot cause tumor death uh, on their own. So non-effector cells prevent the immune uh, action uh, of the effector cells uh, in cancer. Uh, non-effector cells allows tumor to grow. So this is all about the uh, type of uh, immune cells.